Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, you guys are very lucky um, to have me here. Um, quite famous. But also, I don't perform without conditions. And uh, when Jane, who's the person that asked me, invited me to come along here and speak to you, I said, well, I've got certain conditions, Jane. She said, what are they? I said, well, I only ever perform when there are more people on stage than in the auditorium. And she's done that. Well done. <laughs> she said, any other conditions? I said, yes, I want a hat to protect me from the lights, but also something attached to keep away the flies. And she's done that. She said, great, we'll see you there. I said, there's one more condition. She said, what is that? I said, two weeks before the event, I'd like you to plant a triffid either side of the stage, and she's come through with that as well. Well done. <laughs> Look, I just want to congratulate you all for being here, all you graduates. Um, you know, where, wherever you come from, uh, whichever college at Massey you belong to, whether it be business, health, humanities and social sciences, science, Gryffindor, Slytherin, whichever <laughs> one you come from, you've made it here to the final tribal council. And I hope that you make it through. And I've been asked to remind you, now is the time to play uh, those uh, immunity idols if you have them. Anyone? No? OK, we'll carry on. Now, what Jane asked me when she invited me, she invited me along, she said, I'd like you to talk about future aspirations. And uh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> what I'm going to do is give you a gift. I'm going to give you a gift, some of the pearls of wisdom that I have learned out there the hard way. I'm going to give you what you probably know as Corbett's Nuggets. A little grab bag you will leave here today with, a little grab bag of Corbett's Nuggets, bits of wisdom you can dip into when business throws little speed bumps, when life throws little speed bumps in front of you. And you see what I did there? What I was asked to do, I adapted to what I'm better at doing. And that's the first of Corbett's Nuggets. Don't do what you're asked to do, do what you're good at. Sure, your boss might want, you know, a spreadsheet sort of run down some graphs on consumer habits, you know, customer spending, but imagine how much happier they'll be with a poem. <laughs> or maybe a charcoal drawing, you know, <laughs> or a song written for them on the accordion. I don't know what you're good at. You've got to do some of the work here, people. Next nugget, say yes to everything. Say yes to everything. Apart from those things, obviously, which you should say no to, and uh, those things will become obvious only after you've said yes. <laughs> if you're going to sit in an exit row, don't argue with the air crew. That's more of a Robert Jones nugget. <laughs> Thank you. Really don't have time for applause. Got to race through this. There are many ways of achieving your goals. Two main ways of achieving your goals. Working hard is obviously one of them. The other one that I've employed, make your goals easier. That's your next Corbett nugget. Lower your expectations. By all means, by all means, aim high. But before you pull the trigger, do me a favor. Have a little bit of a look around for lower, slower, fatter targets. <laughs> huh? I mean, who's happier? The person who gets fired from a big, high-paying job? Or the unemployed person who finds a Tim Tam down the back of the couch? Food for thought. Don't fight the laws of the universe. That's my next nugget, next Corbett nugget. Don't fight the laws of the universe. And this, this came home to me last year when I was traveling with uh, Seven Days, a TV show that we do. It's 9.30 Friday nights on TV3. You might want to write that down. <laughs> We're not on at the moment. We're back in a couple of weeks. TV3, 9.30 Friday nights. I was traveling with them. And um, like some of you students, uh, I'd have a drink. And then I'd wake up with a hangover. And then uh, next night, uh, I'd have a drink and wake up with a hangover. And this repeated. And I thought to myself, is there any, any way I can break this cycle and not wake up with a hangover? And so I called my father. He lives in Blenheim. He's, uh, he's retired now. He retired now, but he is a doctor, was a doctor. He was a pathologist, so never lost a patient. <laughs> and I said to him, Dad, is there any way of avoiding the hangover? And he said, no, there's not, son. There's not. He said, one of the immutable laws of the universe it's the fun, unfun balance, or as he told it to me, the FU balance. Easy to remember, fun, unfun balance. He said it's one of the great balances of the universe. When that gets out of whack, things go awry. The planet starts to tilt. Polar ice caps start to melt. Look, the science isn't settled on this, but a lot of scientists believe the fun, unfun balance is contributing to global warming. <laughs> the science is settled on that's what killed the dinosaurs. Too much fun, smoking pterodactyls, not enough unfun getting stuff done. That's what killed the dinosaurs, the fun, <laughs> unfun balance getting out of whack. He said, so you have a drink, that's fun. You're going to get a hangover, that's unfun. 
You eat a packet of chocolate biscuits. That's fun. Turn into fatty boomsticks. I'm fun. <laughs> you have sex. That's fun. Rest of your life ruined by children. I'm fun. <laughs> you pull on a ponytail. That's fun. <laughs> hmm? You get away with it. That's even more fun. Some laws <laughs> don't apply to John Key. I don't know how he gets away with it. Moving on to the next nugget, they say think outside the box. No, everyone's heard that. They're all outside there now. Go back inside the box. There's heaps of room. <laughs> everyone's back inside the rock box. It's really quiet. There's heaps of room. They say zig when other people zag. No, don't do that. If you see someone zagging, you zag as well. They'll see you in their rear vision mirror. They go, oh, he's zagging. I should zig. He'll zig. You'll have the zag to yourself. <laughs> you can zag all the way back to inside the box where you can get all that thinking done. Stand out from the crowd. That's not really a nugget, that's just general life advice. That's literal, I mean, I just don't like crowds. Um, <laughs> just stand out. I mean, this is all right, because you've got your own seat, so it's not, but you know, if it's a protest or something, they all get, to be honest, those protests are pretty bad personal hygiene, gets a bit stinky, people in your personal space, just stand out from the crowd. It's just simple, basic, not all of you, obviously, because then you form a new crowd and that starts a whole new problem. <laughs> Try and use a little bit of common sense. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how do I make an impression in my job? When I get out into the workforce, how do I make an impression? Well, do what I did. Arrive late, leave early. <laughs> what boss isn't going to appreciate someone who has the skill to get a day's work done so much quicker than anyone else? <laughs> and how about getting that job? That's an interesting one, isn't it? The application. It's only been once in my life that I've actually had to employ someone, that I've been in charge of that process. And here's what I did, and maybe you can take this wisdom and use it. I took the pile of CVs, all the applications, before I even looked at them. I hadn't even glanced at them. I just went through and tossed a few in the bin. Because you don't want unlucky people working for you. <laughs> so be lucky. Which leads me to my final piece of advice, and probably my most important. Never take advice from successful people. Don't. Sure, they'll tell you how they got there, how they got successful, but they'll be very revisionist in that. They'll make themselves the hero, so you never get the real truth. Either that or they'll lie directly to your face. Yeah, they will. Because let's face it, competition is tough out there. We don't want a whole lot of smart people like you going out already armed with the secrets of success. That's why they're called secrets. <laughs> you will not gather any wisdom from someone successful standing up here and telling you anything, and I think I have proved that this afternoon. <laughs> Good luck.